guys you know what before i <laughs> before i got out to go to him in my head this guy would definitely ask of my number and come and worry me like i had had that passport for six good <laughs> I had had that passport for six good months and I didn't even notice my surname was wrongly spelled. Unless you swear an affidavit or affidavit or whatever they call <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Naku Alate again and I'm back with another video. Um, if you are new to my channel, thanks so much for coming by. I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button below to join my amazing YouTube family. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for your support. You don't know I love you. So, it's been a while I did a story time, so I thought why not. So, today's video is a story time. And it's a story time about when I found out my name. Actually, my surname was wrongly spelled in my passport um, three days before my visa appointment. And I couldn't have it. Like, I just couldn't have it. I was so worried. I don't know if I overreacted, but like, so this was during my whole um, preparation for school period. So I was done filling in my visa application form and whatnot. I had submitted it, booked my date, like obviously rehearsed for my interview. I thought I was set, like I thought I was ready. I had it all together until three days before my appointment. I don't know like something just said go through your documents to see if you have everything sorted out guys as i was going through my documents and like arranging everything to make sure like i have everything that i'm supposed to submit on that day i took out my obviously i had to submit my car statement if you don't know what a car statement is, I explained it in my study abroad process video. It would appear somewhere here so you can check it out. So I took out my car statement and guess what I saw? I noticed that my surname had been spelled wrongly and I had had this car statement for over a week and I didn't notice it. So my surname is spelled a l l o t e y on the car statement my surname was spelled a l l o t t e y so i immediately thought to myself how did this happen like how did this happen then i remembered that uh, before the car statement was sent to me the school asked me to send them um, a scanned copy of my um, passport by data page so I quickly went to check in my passport like because obviously that is where they'll get the name from to process my car statement so I immediately went to check in my passport and then I noticed that my surname <laughs> was actually wrongly spelled in my passport like in my passport it was double T but this was like my second passport so like on my very first passport my name was correctly spelled my my surname was with one t but then during the renewal it was spelled with a double t and so that was where that was where the whole confusion started because i scanned that one to them because obviously my old passport had expired so they needed to use my new passport so that was what i scanned to them and i didn't notice this and i had had that passport too for i had that passport in april so, yeah, February, March, April, May, June, July, I guess September. Like, I had had that passport for six good. <laughs> I had had that passport for six good months, and I didn't even notice my surname was wrongly spelled. And that is how serious this whole issue is. So I noticed that the fault was partly from me because I sent them um, a passport that had their name wrongly spelled. So that was what they also used. And even after that, I noticed that all of the like documents that the school had had sent to me had my surname spelled wrongly. Like I didn't notice it. So now I was so disturbed, and my my appointment and my interview was in three days time. So like, what can I? Because when I was filling the visa application forms, I spelled my surname with a single T. 
so how is it that now i'll show up for the interview or for the appointment and my documents and some of my documents would have um double t so like who are you are you the are you the alote with a single t or you're the alote with a double t like that is the question i am the type so, of person who worries about like every single thing like every little thing i don't know if it's because my head is big and i feel like it is big enough to take a lot of things but, but like i worry this big head about every single thing i was so worried i didn't know what to do so i immediately called my boyfriend like by then my boyfriend was in abuja so i called him and i was like this is what is going on like this is what is happening i think i even cried like i'm so much of a cry baby so he was like but this shouldn't be like so much of a problem and i'm like no i want everything to be right like i want everything to add up i don't want to go there with like any fault any mistake so i need to correct this and he asked if i had called miss marie um she's the lady from uks so for those for those of you who don't know i explained in that video the processing requirement for studying abroad when i got to my whole um visa preparing for my visa stage i went to uks so they are uks is like a company or an institution that helps with like st the whole study abroad process but i only went to them when i was doing my my visa stuff so he was like have you spoken to miss marie i said not yet so i called miss marie when i called miss marie miss marie too was like this shouldn't be so much of a problem like it's not a big deal but naku was not having it like it's not a big deal so saying like no what can we do to fix this and then she was like well go to the passport office and see if they can issue out a new passport with your like surname correctly spelled I was like okay cool so immediately like i got dressed i dressed up go out of the house and straight to the passport office so i went to the the passport office behind the is it the national theater yeah the national theater so i got there and then the security people at the gate asked me like what am i coming obviously it's a passport office why are you, why are you now coming to ask me what are you coming to do i'm like okay this 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 is the problem then they told me this is not done here i didn't even know that we had two passport offices in Accra, so they told me this is not done here this is done at the i think that place is rage right yeah this is done at the rage office so go there and then they'll sort you out i said okay so as i was leaving there was this man like he was also out there i think he saw me talking to the the security men so now he approached me and he asked me like what is it and all of that I, th I don't know if he works at the passport office or he's one of those people who help people to like fill fill in their passport forms and all of that so he walked up to me and i told him what it was and then he was like oh when i go to the ridge office i should say i'm looking for this person apparently he knows like the process or he knows the person at the other office who does that so he gave me a name and then he said when you get there say let's call the person let's call this man alvin so he said when you get there say you are looking for alvin and he would sort it out for you i said okay cool so now i got to the ridge office i told them what i was there to do like obviously the security men at the gates also asked me so i told them and they also said um go to alvin's office so let's say alvin's office is like room one so after i finished talking to the security people as i was about to walk to search for room one this lady was passing by so the lady works there so now the security man told the lady take her to room one alvin's office madam i was following this lady i noticed that we had bypassed room one and i'm like please they said i should go and see alvin in room one and we just bypassed room one madame says no you are supposed to go to room five i'm pretty sure she was even a national service girl like you know when women feel like yes you are in my territory i am the boss they said i should go to room one you two are telling me i have to go to room five okay no problem i'm the one who needs the thing so i just kept quiet and then i followed her now we get to room five and um she says okay this is the place i enter and then i tell the people what the problem is they said no you are supposed to go to room one i insulted the girl in my head i won't lie 
I insulted a girl in my head. I'm not even going to lie. Like, what is the meaning of that? So I just walked back to room one. I got there. I saw Alvin. Almighty Alvin. I went to Alvin and I told Alvin what my problem was. After saying my problem to Alvin, Alvin just looked at my face and he was just quiet. Like, man, tell me if I'm going to like have this sorted out today or not. Because I needed to know if like it's possible to, to get a new passport that day in order for me to to know if I'm supposed to um, reschedule my appointment or still stick to that date. Like, I was under a lot of pressure. Time was not on my side, so I needed a response. Like, tell me if it's going to be possible or not so that I know my next move. But Alvin was just there. After I told him, I think he was just quiet for a while. Then he went like, okay, have a seat without saying anything to me. And he attended to some other people. I was so frustrated. I was stressed because I needed to know if it was going to be possible or not. If I should leave my appointment date as it was or if I should reschedule. Because if I wasn't going to be able to get it on that same day and it was going to be two or five working days after then obviously i needed to reschedule my appointment but then if i was going to get it that same day then i could leave my appointment date as it was alvin was not saying anything he was attending to other people i sat there for a while then alvin finally calls me to his desk so i got there and then he he took my well my passport was already with him so he opened my passport and then he noticed that the, pa <laughs> the passport that had the name wrongly spelled by my second passport, I had already used it to travel with. <laughs> I used that passport to travel to Dubai. Like I went to Dubai, I'm back, passed through immigration over here, passed through immigration in Dubai and whatnot. I go back, my second name was wrongly spelled. I didn't see it. Now Alvin goes like, since you have used the passport to travel, we can't issue you with a new passport unless you swear an affidavit or affidavit or whatever they call <laughs> I'm like, what? And how long is that going to take? Alvin says that will take some days. Hey, now come and see my face. I'm like, please, I have a visa appointment in three days' time. Can you please help me out? So I explained to Alvin, I had a visa appointment in three days' time, and that is how important this is to me. So I beg him, if he can do anything to like help me out, I beg him in the name of God, he should please help me out. Alvin was doing himself some way, some way, like... This is the only way, I, there's nothing I can do about it. At this point, I had lost hope. Cause see, already I was behind time in terms of like getting my things done to go to school. Cause school was literally starting in like two weeks time. And I didn't even have my visa sorted out. I was way behind time. So, um, rescheduling my visa appointment would even make things worse for me. Like, they might even think I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to the UK for school. Like, why do you have to wait till last minute and whatnot? So, like, I was just about So, now me. Alvin says to me, okay, sit down and wait for me. I was wondering, like, what is he coming to say next? If you know you're not going to help me out, you just let me know and obviously let me know my stand so i know what to do like what my next move is going to be so i sat down alvin went back to attending to others and like i was under a lot of pressure like because time was going like time was going and i needed to know if i'm supposed to reschedule my appointment asap so that i'll be able to get like the next closest available date now alvin finally calls me to his desk again and the first question he asked me was are you a christian and i'm like yeah and he goes like what church do you attend so i told him i'm an anglican and he's like <laughs> what did he even say your god is on your side and i'm like amen <laughs> it's 
said he said he was going to do it for me and like immediately i was so relieved and happy and grateful like i just went back to sit down alvin took my passport and stepped out like he went upstairs guys within 10 minutes or let's say almost 15 minutes um yeah 10 to 15 minutes alvin was back downstairs with a new passport for me with my name correctly spelled good within 10 to 15 minutes oh yeah he, he handed it over to me he said go through to make sure everything is okay make sure your name is rightly spelled make sure your date of birth make sure everything is correct in there so he gave it to me i was sitting like i was seated and then he went to sit behind his computer again so i went through made sure everything was okay and now like i went to him to confirm that oh everything is okay guys you know what before i <laughs> before i got out to go to him in my head this guy would definitely ask of my number and come and worry me like see me or someone who has helped someone who has helped me out like before i even got out to go to his desk that was the thought so i was thinking if he asked for my number should i give him my correct number like i have this other number that i don't really use so should i give him my correct number or in my head this guy will definitely start hitting on me because he has helped me out so i woke up to alvin's desk to tell him oh everything is correct everything like every information on there is genuinely judged now Alvin goes like, okay, um, go to room, let's say room six, go to room six and have them um, cancel your old passport. That's like the one that had the name wrongly spelled. So that was all Alvin said to me, like when I walked up to him to say everything was okay. So that was literally it. He said that to me and he was like, good luck in my head. Like, which kind of man is this? guys he didn't ask for my number it's not like the environment was not right for him to ask of my number because i think there was just one other lady in the room when like i got done and i was like standing right in front of him so even if he had asked for my number the other lady wouldn't have heard like the environment was conducive it was ideal no distraction nothing this man just said go to room six have it cancelled and good luck see he was definitely an angel sent to me on that day chris i was really surprised he didn't ask for my number i was really surprised he helped me without asking for my number because in my head he was going to hit on me in my head like this guy is definitely going to bother me after after helping me out i just walked out of that office or that whole um, passport office building so surprised so 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 surprised so yeah now i have my new passport i have like my name correctly spelled and what's not the next thing i had to do was to now send the correct bio data page as in the bio data page of my new passport to the school for them to correct my the name on my car statement and all other documents that they sent to me so i scanned it and this was on 3rd september so i scanned the bio data page of my new passport to the school and i like i explained to them what the issue was and then the fact that i had a visa appointment in three days time so this needed to be done like asap i sent this email and i waited and waited and waited the day ended i hadn't heard from them guys now the next day is here which is 4th september and i really don't remember if um it's either 24 or you can't change your visa appointment date I really don't remember but it's either 24 or 48 hours to your visa appointment so like i was time constrained i needed to know if 
this was like if they were going to be able to issue me with a new car statement before like that time limit because time was going now it was for um, for um, September I hadn't heard from them I sent in the email again I sent a reminder guys I was frustrated I was stressed I didn't know what to do I didn't know if I should just reschedule and wait for them to to send it or I should go in there like that now 4th September also went to an end without a reply from them now the next day which is 5th September and I had still not rescheduled my appointment I still left it for the sit and God did so good guys on the 5th of September the school finally replies my email and said to me okay noted um they don't need to issue me with um, a new car statement but rather they are going to send um, an email to um, ukvi to let them know of like the corrections like the correct spelling of my name and what not like i was so happy because this was like just a day before my visa appointment guys this was just a day so i was so relieved and so happy and i was like yes now i'm ready i have like there's nothing to worry about and i was prepared like i went in there with so much confidence knowing that everything was intact everything was like now to the moral of the story guys i know as girls or as women whenever um people tend to help us out especially when they are males we mostly think they expect or would expect something in return or like yeah we mostly think they would ask for your number come and worry you come and hit on you and stuff like that but like just know that there are some good ones out there like there are people who are willing to help you without asking asking for anything from you or expecting anything in return you. like this guy helped me out without even asking for my number because mostly like the first step is asking for the number then the rest continues but this guy didn't even ask of my number though nothing prevented him like like i said the, the environment was very much conducive because like i have been in situations where i have like a lot of people even around and the guy would still ask for your number so that was like a very easy like situation for him over there but he didn't ask for my number like he genuinely helped me out so just know that there are some good guys out there who are willing to help you out so don't just thank every guy is like that yeah okay guys so i hope you enjoyed my story time and i hope um i hope you take the moral of this story because yeah there are some good ones out there um let me know if you've ever found yourself in like a situation where a guy needed to help you out and did a guy hit on you after helping you out or he was just one of those ones who genuinely wanted to help like let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this video with your friends i'll see you in my next video bye